hi guys so today we're telling the story of a young man who goes by the name a fine maxwell dk who killed an eight years old girl in 2017 for ritual purposes of course so on 18th of august 2017 eight years old chikamso victory Mizuba, who lived at St. Messiah Street in Lyozu, Obiakwa local government area of River State, went missing. Now, her father and other relative had engaged in a search of the little girl on the day of the incident, but their search was fruitful. So, they had made a police report of the missing child and we're hoping for a miracle that at least good news will come from any quarter at all informing them that their little girl had been found but unfortunately their hope was going to be dashed as early as of saturday 19th of august 2017 the vigilante group in that community arrested a young man with a bag at about 1 a.m. Now, this young man who was arrested was Ifai Maxwell D.K., who was 23 years old at the time, a 200-level student of the physics department in the University of Port Harcourt. When the vigilante group arrested Ifai with the bag they asked him what he was carrying and they had to open the bag to their greatest shock there in the bag was the body of the missing eight years old Chikamso Victory Mizuba the little girl had been killed unfortunately and vital organs from her body were missing her vagina was missing her tongue was missing they also removed her fingers and other vital organs from chikamso's body according to the father at the time he got the vigilante called him out that night and told him they have found his daughter so he rushed to where um, they took him to and he asked where is she and they pointed to a bag and when he opened the bag truly his daughter was in the bag except that she was lifeless and looking closely he realized her eyes were not there. They had gushed out, out her eyes. Um, he realized they had taken out vital organs from her body. And there by the side was Ifai DK seated with his face facing the ground, apparently ashamed of what he had, he had done. And the father of Chikamsu, described Ifai as someone he would rightly call his cousin. They were relatives and when asked why he did what he did, he said um, he was asked to bring those vital organs in exchange for wealth. So it was clearly a ritual killing. So the police handed over DK to the police, the vigilante rather, handed over DK to the police for further investigation. And when the police took over the matter, they began their own investigation. And when they were done getting confessional statement from Ifai DK, they decided to transfer him to the state criminal investigation department. And the father of the deceased eight years old went to the uh, state criminal investigation department alongside the accused at the time, Ifai Ndiki, 
where they were both expected to write down their statements. When they all got, got to the state CID, there was said to be darkness. There was no light. I'm wondering why there was no light. At least a generator should have said, right? Oh, well, they said there was no light. It was more like total darkness. So they were asked to write their statements. And um, Chikamso's father wrote his own statement. And while they, the accused was uncuffed to write his own statement, he did write his statement but was not cuffed back by the sergeant who was um, in charge at the time. So as soon as he finished writing his statement, the next thing there was this pandemonium at the CCID, they, they kept saying, they started screaming, hold him, hold him, he had escaped. And the, the girl's father said he could not really understand what was happening. How could he have escaped? But it happened all in his presence and it happened all fast. But it was completely inexplicable because how could a suspect have escaped from the police in fact, from the state CID, where there were police officers watching him, even on guard at the gate, how did he do it? And the, the girl's father was disappointed at the time, but he, he vowed he was going to, he was not going to let go. He was going to ensure that justice was served to his daughter. So the commissioner of police also gave his word, assuring the public that they were going to make sure that Ifai Indike was rearrested. And the police really did not relent. They got to work. As a few weeks after his uh, escape from the state CID, he was rearrested in Joss Plateau State, where he ran to take cover. They arrested him in Joss and they took him back to uh, Port Harcourt to be, to be arraigned in court. And they eventually charged him in court for murder, but he wasn't alone. Of course, he had an accomplice, a co-defendant. Uh, he was the first defendant and his accomplice, who goes by the name Ugo Chukumamiru, who was also his cousin, was the second defendant. Both of them were charged for murder. Not just murder, they also did defiled the little girl before murdering her and taking out the vital organs from her body. So they were charged to court and the tr their trial began. The, the judgment was set for 13th of um, May 2020 and during the delivery of judgment by Justice Adolphus Enabeli he, he stated that the prosecutor had proven his case beyond reasonable doubt that indeed if I DK and his cousin Ogochuku Wamiru both committed the murder of eight years old Chikamso Victory Mezuba. The duo were found guilty of the murder, and Justice Adolfo sentenced Ifan Idike to death by hanging, and he said Ifan Idike was to be hung by the neck until he dies while Ugo Chukumwamiro was to be hung by the leg until he dies. All of them were sentenced to death without an option of fine. Now, the sergeant who um, had allowed Ifai Indike to escape from the state CID, who goes by the name Sergeant John Bosco um, Okoronze, was sentenced to one year's imprisonment by Justice Adolphus. And Justice Adolphus enabled stated that he's, he sentenced him to one year's imprisonment because he had been in prison for two years already before the, the time of the sentencing. And he had also since been dismissed from the police force for, for assisting Ifa Indiki to escape 
from the police custody. Now, that was how uh, their trial ended. Meanwhile, the counsel to the second defendant, talking about Ugo Chukunwamiru, did said that they were going to appeal the judgment of the high court. For the counsel to Ifai DK, he did state that they may not appeal the judgment considering the circumstances. And I am glad that the police sergeant got punished as it should be. Because a lot of times things like this happen and it looks as if people get away with such. But it's really, really comforting to know that the law took its course and it did took its course fully on this matter. I would love to know your thoughts on this whole judgment of the court. Do you think judgment, justice has been served? I think it was a good judgment. But I would love to know your thoughts. If you think justice was served, Please do comment in the comment section if you think otherwise. I would also like to know why you think otherwise. Our prayers remain with the family of eight years old Chikam so victory Mizuba as time may never really heal the wound of losing a child in a very gruesome manner. Even worse, by a relative. So if you enjoyed watching this video, please like it, share it, and do well to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't fail to turn on your notifications so you will be the first to know as soon as we upload our crime stories. In the meantime, guys, take care of yourself, take care of your emotions, be kind to yourself, be kind to the people around you, and always, always be safe. I remain Dr. Sigel Logan and I love you.